Hello, this is Eric Forget from NetApp with a demonstration of the data store provisioning and management feature of the Rapid Cloning Utility 3.0. This video includes six mini demonstrations designed to show the end-to-end -end storage provisioning and management feature available directly from vCenter. We'll provision a new VMFS and NFS based data store. We'll then resize those data stores, review the deduplication savings on a data store, and then destroy a data store. We'll start with provisioning a 100 gig VMFS based data store over FCP. To provision a data store, simply right click the ESX host or container of ESX host you'd like to make the data store available to. What I mean by container is either a cluster of ESX hosts or the whole data center as I'm going to do in this case. So when the wizard pops up, we'll choose the controller we want to work with, then select the type of data store we want to create. Obviously I can create VMFS over Fiber Channel or iSCSI. We'll stick with Fiber Channel in this case. We'll set the size to 100, give it a name, and I'm going to leave it in the default volume here and make it thin provisioned. We can obviously change the block size as well. In this case I'm going to choose the default. And we get our NetApp data store allocation task. The first thing we do is create the LUN and present it to the SX hosts and then we have to go to each ESX host and rescan the HBAs to make sure it sees the new LUN. We'll then refresh the host storage system on each ESX host and create the new data store on the LUN we provisioned. We'll then rescan for VMFS to make sure all the ESX hosts see the data store. And finally, we'll set the optimal pathing options for each individual ESX host accessing this data store. In this case, we're adding the data store to an ESX 3.5 and 4.0 host, so the settings are different. Please see the NetApp Best Practices TR for more information. We see that our new VMFS data store has in fact been created, and it's 100 gig. Next, we'll move on to provisioning an NFS-based data store, also 100 gig. Again, I'm going to provision this data store to all the ESX hosts in my data center. So we'll start the wizard again, choose the controller we're interested in working with, and this time we'll select NFS. Again, give it 100 gig, give it a name. Uh, in this case, we're going to thin provision it and set the auto grow policy, which is completely controlled by the NetApp controller we're going to tell it to grow in increments of 10 gig and it can grow to a maximum of 200 gig. And again we get a NetApp data store allocation task. In this case we're going to refresh the host storage system, attach each ESX host to the new volume we just created on the storage controller. And as you can see we now have our data store. One of the new features in ESX4 is the ability to grow VMFS based data stores without having to use extents. This works extremely well with NetApp LUNs since the NetApp LUNs can be dynamically resized while the LUNs are available online and serving data. This demonstration shows how to take advantage of this directly from vCenter. So to resize a data store, simply choose the data store, right click on it, in the NetApp menu choose Resize. In this case, we're going to take this 100 gig data store and make it 200 gig. You can see that our maximum data store size is listed above. We kick off a NetApp data store property change task. And in just a second, we'll see the size change. And there we go. In very little time, we're able to add an additional 100 gig to our VMFS base data store. So in the case of NFS based data stores, we can both grow and shrink the data store. And so in this case, we'll show shrinking an NFS based data store. Again, we'll right click on the data store we want to work with and in the NetApp menu, choose resize. In this case, I'm going to drop it down to 80 gig. Hit OK. And again, we see the NetApp data store property change task kicked off. 
and you can see that we've already changed the capacity on the data store. Both of these resize operations can be done while VMs are live and accessing the data store. So the next demonstration is a review of the deduplication savings on a data store. This also is available on a right-click action. Choose NetApp, deduplication management. So what we can do from this panel is disable deduplication because it's already enabled in this case. We could start deduplication if we had just added patches to all of the virtual machines and wanted to recoup some savings. We can also get some information about the data store itself and what it maps to on the NetApp controller. In this case, it's mapped to a volume called Quick Test, which happens to live on a aggregate called VMware. You can see that we're getting some really nice savings here from the dedupe feature, saving over 44 gig. I'll also show an interesting phenomenon a customer pointed out to me recently. If we double click on the data store, flip back over to the uh, data store's inventory view and take a look at the provision space here. You can see that Virtual Center initially thinks that we've actually got way more storage provisioned in this particular data store than is possible. The way to clear this up is to hit the refresh button. Uh, you can also right click and choose refresh and that brings that in line with what is actually on the data store and of course we can right click on the data store in this view as well and verify what Virtual Center is reporting. Last but not least we'll destroy a data store. Destroy a data store is going to involve removing all of the VMs from the data store, removing the data store from the ESX hosts, and then deallocating the storage on the controller. We'll start the wizard by right-clicking on the data store we want to get rid of, and in the NetApp menu, we'll choose Destroy. The wizard's going to show us the virtual machines that are associated with this data store, and by destroying the data store, we obviously destroy the virtual machines. When we hit Apply, the NetApp data store deallocation task will kick off. We can see that it quickly unregistered those virtual machines, removed the data stores, and deallocated the space on the storage controller. Let's review the result of the demonstration. So we set out to provision a 100 gig VMFS based data store over fiber channel. We did that. We chose thin provisioned, which made the LUN thin provisioned, and of course the RCU optimized the paths for us. We set out to do the same thing with an NFS based data store. Again, chose thin provisioned and we were able to take advantage of the auto-grow feature of the NetApp controller. Next up was growing the VMFS based data store. We added an additional 100 gig worth of data store space by growing the LUN and growing the VMFS file system. Then decided to shrink the NFS based data store and we made that space on the controller available for other things. We reviewed the deduplication savings on a data store uh, we then destroyed a data store which took care of removing the virtual machines from the inventory and then did an end-to-end -end deallocation. Thank you very much for your time. Go further faster with a rapid cloning utility from NetApp.